Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today we're gonna to be trying to be the most effective and cunning builders in US Telegraph. In this game, the players are going to be managing their hand of cards as well as their buildings that make up their town and their sort of buildings along the way in order to deploy those buildings or connect two major cities. You know, you can do one of those two things to try to win the game. This is a reprint of Attica, a game that came out, oh, I want to say over 10 years ago. And uh, that game, of course, had a different theme on it. This has been rethemed. They've changed a couple of small rules in the game, and it is finally back. So let's go ahead and dive into this, just in case you don't know how Attica works, which is fine. It's uh, quite a few years old. And then we're going to uh, come back, and I'll tell you what I think of it. I'll mention some of the small changes they made from Attica, and uh, it's just how I feel about it now, all those years later. Each player is going to have their own player board. They're going to have their own set of buildings uh, shuffled up, and divide it as seen here. And they are going to draw a number of cards depending on the turn order, okay? So as the first player, for example, I would get four of these, the players after me would get more. We're gonna set up the board over here. In this case, you're looking at a board for two players, but there would be more of these tiles in a different configuration for three and more for four players. And then you are ready to begin. You simply need to reveal one of each uh, from top of the piles here. So each pile, we take the top one, we reveal it, and we put it on the matching building, the matching spot, on our player board over here. Once that's done, then the star player will commence the game, and they will be able to take one of two different actions, all right? So the different actions are listed down here, and they are, you may draw buildings or construct buildings that have already been drawn and are sitting here openly on your board. The objective of the game is one of two things. You can either connect two of the major cities on the map, there's only two for two players, but there would be more for more players, or you simply construct all of your buildings. If you're the first one to do one of those two things, you win the game outright, and that's all there is to it. No scoring, nothing else. So, if I choose to draw buildings, I can draw zero, one, or two of these buildings, pick the pile, reveal that building, and either build it right away or simply leave it in my reserve. If I choose the bottom action, construct buildings, I can do zero, one, two, or three, and those would be built from here. Now, the reason they give you these uh, ranges is because anything you do not do, you will then uh, finish out those actions by drawing cards. So here's what I mean by that. Let's say I want to build this tile here. After it's been built, and that's the only one I build, and this would be my bottom action here, construct buildings. Let's say I build that somewhere out here. I'll talk about how building works in one second. Then for the other two possible actions I would be given, I say, you know, I'm not gonna build anything else. I just wanna draw cards with those two actions. So it would be one, two, and three. And these are going to show you different resources as seen on the layout there on the board. So let's go back to building buildings. How does this work? Well, each building is going to have a cost as listed on it. This one simply happens to be any five things, but the other ones usually tell you exactly what's needed. So for example, let's take a look at this building here. Uh, that is fields as listed on my board, and it requires one steel, one wood, and two water. I am going to build this anywhere I want to on the board, and then I have to pay for that building. So again, I would pay those matching resources from my hand of cards, but I might get a discount on that, and that is based on what's on the board already. You see anything, where, when I play one of these tiles, anything that's underneath that new tile or around and revealed is going to reduce the cost of that token I am building. And so, for example, if I build it there, I am reducing that cost by one water, one steel, meaning now I only have to pay the other water and the wood. And I could do that. I could pay one water, one wood, discard those, and that's been built. I'm also going to take one of these tokens and mark that it's been built, 
by putting it on the appropriate spot on my player board over here to allow me to keep track of that. Uh, there's another way to get things on the board more cheaply, in fact, for free, and that is if you build things in the correct order and adjacent to one another. So now that I've built fields, and according to my track right here, barn is connected to the fields. And so if I have that token, I could build it next to this one with one of my actions, and it would be completely free. It doesn't matter what's printed on the board, does not matter what cards I'm holding, but it has to be done in that order. So if I build 31 first and then build 30 next to that, I'll still need to pay for that as per usual. There are a couple more things that go into building. If you ever build a building that is not part of your connected group, you are going to have to, besides paying whatever the cost is, pay a, a penalty basically for starting a new cluster of buildings. And that is going to be one card, one extra card, per previous grouping of buildings. So if I've already built that and I want to build this, it'll cost me that metal, that wood, and any one other card. If I later on, for some reason, decide to start over here, two extra cards, and so on. Of course, if I connect these later on and want to start a new one, that cost would have been reduced, right? One final thing when it comes to buildings. Uh, if I ever completely build a grouping of the ones out here, so for example, as you can see, there's a small one here with the fields in the barn. I've got this here with a bridge, a viaduct, and then a tunnel, and then a station. That's a group with the arrows following that. This is a massive group here, and there's a few different ones. As soon as I build an entire group, uh, so it's been marked off on my board, I am going to earn one of these workers here. And that's, they have a reminder right there on the board to help you out. This character, as listed right here, is an extra action. You can use it right now, you could save it for later. That extra action lets you simply pump one of these numbers up by one, which could also be just drawing a card. And you can only ever draw a card at the end of uh, your turn, right? So it's never draw a card and then immediately build. That always comes in at the end of your go. So I could just dump right, right away and draw a card, or I could dump it and continue doing whichever one of these two I had previously chosen and had started doing. You might have noticed by now that it's not really possible for the players to build all of their buildings with a board so small. And so there's a new thing that's going to happen whenever you uh, deplete one of these four stacks over here. As you can see there printed on the board, as soon as the last one is drawn and you've decided what to do with it, either deploy it immediately or save it for later, you are going to then draw one of these tiles and add it to the layout. You can put it anywhere you want to as long as at least uh, two faces here are touching. So you could do this, but you can also create a space that will never be filled. You could do that. That's okay as well. You know, you could do uh, over here. You could do however you want to do it that is up to you. So you could do that, for example. Uh, and that is going to happen every time you completely uh, deplete one of these stacks over here, allowing you perhaps to not just build more, but maybe go around a blockade and try to connect two of these major cities. Because like I said, that's one of the two ways in which you win. So there you go, that's how the game works that you're going to manage your buildings, draw them at the right time. You are going to manage your hand of cards, uh, try to make smart connections, try to trick your opponent into being forced to make uh, bad moves just to block you, uh, and then ultimately trying to get that victory. All of the buildings or two major cities touching. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it, all right? All right, so there it is, US Telegraph. I used to own Attica um, many years ago, and I've, I enjoyed the game. I had it for a long, long time. I had a couple of minor issues with it, but I rated it, you know, I don't know, a 7 or a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, it, was a, it was a fun game. It was an excellent game. looked fantastic. So now it's back with a new theme, and like I said, a couple of different things. Uh, what do I think about it? Let's break this down, okay? And I will start right there with the theme. I think this theme as opposed to the original theme where you were just sort of building these, uh, you know, uh, Roman buildings and there was not really a, a reason exactly for connecting places. This makes a lot more sense. This is a great theme. 
I think they knocked it out of the park with this re-theme. It really works. Uh, the look of the game. I, I still say the original one looks a little bit better. Just brighter. It was gorgeous. A gorgeous design. But you know what? When I saw pictures of this online, I was a little concerned about that. Now seeing it in person looks fantastic. Very clear, easy to play, no problem there. So the aesthetics are great. The replayability is still really good. You know, I know some folks out there always had an issue with the game this way, uh, with the way the game scaled, you know. It's like, oh, I like it with two, but not with three. Oh, I like it with more, but not with fewer. Uh, I think it scales fine. I never saw that as an issue. I know, yes, it's going to fall to some of the players to sort of block others from making these connections, but that's part of the game. It's not a fault in the game. If you don't like that, then you just don't like the game. You know, that's okay. So replayability, I think, is high. Game length, still excellent, especially with fewer players. It's just a, such a quick game. You know, it, it surprises me every time with the... Uh, the way in which you can just knock this game out. And I like that very much. So that's fantastic. Ease of play, tactics, and strategy. I want to talk about both of those things a little bit and bring Attica back into the discussion, okay? So um, they're both going to get positives here. So they are good. Uh, the original game, you could not... You, they did not include a way for you to mark which building you had already built out onto the board. In fact, I think I modified mine and included, you know, tokens or something, cubes or whatever, in order to mark a spot so that I knew, hey, this building's been built. It's out there somewhere. I'm not expecting it in my stacks anymore, and now I can keep an eye on which group has been built fully, you know. So, that's fantastic. I'm glad that they included that in here, those, you know, little tokens. They let you know you've built this already. So, just that alone kicks up the ease of play for me a considerable amount and that's it's appreciated and then tactics and strategy they changed one rule which sounds like not a major change i think it's a it's a wonderful change and that is before when you built one of those groups and you got the bonus action you know it used to be an amphora now it's that little worker with a pickaxe the group had to be built adjacent to itself. I mean, it, all those buildings for that group had to be connected on the board. That is no longer the case. Uh, as soon as you build them all, doesn't matter where they are, you get that bonus action. And that's a fantastic way to streamline one of the main sticking points I had with the original game. You know, one of those things that was just a pain to keep track of, you know. Uh, you, once I added in cubes and I could actually see if I built everything of one kind, then I had to check the board and say, okay, well, that one's connected to that one. That one's there. Oh, no, that one's over there. I don't get the action. I don't get that bonus action. Now it doesn't matter where you built them. You get that bonus action if they are all built. And it just feels good. It's a great way to remove something that was annoying and reward the player with actions. You know, it speeds up the game, it makes everything smoother. I think it's a fantastic change, you know. It's wonderful how those little tweaks can really streamline something. So overall, I thought this was just a brilliant reprint. You know, this is one that I, I cannot recommend enough. I think they, uh, if you've never played the original one, you like family weight games, uh, or if you have played the original one, and some of those little things irk to you as well, then this is the game you've been looking for. You know, this is going to get a very strong seal of approval from me. I definitely recommend it. Really glad this is back in print. U.S. Telegraph is a winner, folks. So there you go. That's it for me. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.